on the beat presented by Chevy DriveChicago.com and bring in Bill Zimmerman, the deputy editor of Windy City Gridiron. Bill, a lot to cover today, but let's start with the Jonathan Taylor, probably nonsense. He's not coming to the Bears, right? There's no trade scenario that matches up. Yeah, look, Carm, I can't see this. This makes no sense to me. I love what Ryan Poles did this entire offseason, especially in the, in the running back room. I mean, this is a guy who went out there and got his running back room four deep with, with a rookie and a couple veterans in the mix here. And this group, these four running backs, make less money combined than what David Montgomery is making average per year with the Detroit Lions. I thought it was a brilliant maneuver. He's deep and he's cheap at running back. So you tell me how it makes any sense that Ryan Poles, after doing all this maneuvering at running back, is going to go out and then he's going to give away draft capital that he's also spent time acquiring and give out a large contract to a running back after he was shedding bad contracts for the last year and a half. It makes no sense to me. Jonathan Taylor, last year of his contract, makes sense if you're, if you're a contending team, but it does not make any sense to me for the Chicago Bears, who are on the second year of this rebuild, to go out and get an expensive running back in the final year of his contract. Just doesn't make any sense. Khalil Herbert in a fifth round pick, Bill. Khalil in a fifth. No chance? Not I'm, still not, I'm still not doing it because, well, one, I like Herbert a lot. And Taylor, you know, he was hurt last year. He didn't, you know, he, he was definitely down when he was on the field compared to where he was in 2021. And it's not just Herbert in a fifth. It's you still have to sign him and pay him $14, 15000000 million per season. It just doesn't make a lot of sense yep, to me. Yep, I, that is why it is not going to happen. All right, let's talk about Trey Lance. Apparently he's not going to get traded, at least not immediately. He's, at, he's third on the depth chart but behind Brock Purdy, Sam Darnold. Can we go back to the 2021 draft? The Niners taking Lance over fields. Look what they gave up. They sent four <laughs> picks to the Dolphins to move up to number three. The Dolphins then traded a bunch of those picks. Look who they turn into. I mean, just crazy. Micah Parsons, Cole Strange, Brian Brzee. I mean, this is a huge list here. And then look at the domino effect from that trade. The Dolphins turned around and shipped to the Eagles for the sixth pick where they took Jalen Waddle. He's pretty decent. The Eagles then swapped. They get the Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith. Again, again, a decent move there, right? And, of course, the Cowboys get Micah Parsons, who's only, I guess, one of the, I don't know, five best players in the league. Worst trade of all time, which, by the way, uh, they could have had that guy Patrick Mahomes in 2017, too. Yeah, look, we, we, when, you, when you break down what the 49ers did, to acquire Trey Lance, it, it's remarkably bad. You can absolutely make the, it's always tough to say the worst of all time, but you can absolutely make that argument. I mean, Trey Lance, look, Trey Lance was a project. I don't think people realize how few passes this guy threw before he was drafted in the NFL. It was a handful, I think it was about 300 passes in college, and he only threw like 120 passes in high school. And this guy, was I understand he had the tools and, and you know everything that they look for, but he was a project. And there was always rumors going around that Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch were not seeing eye to eye on that pick. You always heard rumors about Mac Jones, but they went up. They gave this huge amount for Trey Lance when you had other, you know, other quarterbacks, Mac Jones, and of course our guy here, Justin Fields. You go up there, you get the guy. Justin Fields was the number two consensus quarterback in this draft class that entire year, and all of a sudden he slides down, and, and now you're sitting there with Trey. Imagine if they had a better quarterback. I mean, Brock Purdy did a nice job last year. I'm not, I'm not knocking the guy at all. He did a great, especially as the Mr. Irrelevant pick. But imagine if they had landed a quarterback with that spot, with the roster that they have. This, I mean, this would be a 16 and one football team, and now they're still sitting here with Sam Darnold and Brock Purdy and, and, and you know, Trey, nobody wants Trey Lance. It, it's a mess of a quarterback situation, but they have such a good roster. It just may still work out for them that they can have a game manager like Purdy keep them on the tracks, but man, oh man, did they swing and miss with that one. By the way, the Dolphins turned those picks into Tyreek Hill and Bradley Chubb, but to, just to add on. All right, <laughs> <laughs> let's keep talking quarterbacks for a minute. PFF's QB rankings have Justin 18th. That's ahead of only Jordan Love in the NFC North. Fair spot. You going to fight it? What do you think? 
Look, com- coming off of last year, I, th- I think it's a fair spot because we, we know Justin Fields is still growing as a-, as a quarterback. We love the athleticism and, and the big play ability, you know, the-, the you know big play hunter and getting the ball down the field. He's got so many positives, but there were shortcomings last year. A- and they weren't, were they all Justin Fields' fault? No, he didn't get enough protection. We know the weapons were just absolutely dreadful, especially once Darnell Mooney was out. Chase Claypool just did, did not work out last year. So th- there were things absolutely worse working against him but when when you throw for that few yards you can't sit there and turn Justin Fields into a top 10 quarterback in your in your preseason rankings now I think Justin Fields has an absolutely great chance to really break out this year and really put himself on the map as a top 10 12 quarterback now, I don't know if he's going supernova and becoming like a top five quarterback but I think he has all the position if the offensive line can can protect him and stay healthy i think he has all the pieces in place to really jump up from that ranking but coming off of last season no you, you can't sit there and are 18 is pretty good as far as i'm concerned yeah and that supernova thing in that offensive line that is a huge question mark right now hopefully they'll get healthy uh, let's look ahead though to saturday against buffalo fields and the healthy starters here will be playing what exactly will you be watching for well, I think there's a lot of interesting position battles, some of them injury related, some of them just just depth related that I think is going to be interesting to watch. One is punt returner. Who's going to be trotting out there right away in the first quarter returning punts? Because, look, Vellis Jones is here to return kicks, return punts, be the gadget guy. We know the, what job he has, but he just keeps muffing punts. He is a danger back there. I'm going to date myself. This reminds me, I don't know if people remember Lou Barnes, punt returner, I think it was 86 or 87. That guy was dropping punts all over the place, and it was a debacle for a really good football team. Vellis Jones is dangerous back there as a punt returner. I don't know. Here's the problem. If Vellis Jones is on this roster, is Dante Pettis able to make this roster? Because he seems to be the only reliable punt returner. So I'm absolutely keeping an eye on punt returns. I have a feeling Alex Leatherwood and Doug Kramer are going to be playing a lot next to each other. So that's going to be an easy one to watch if you want to watch those two guys, because I think one of them is going to make the the 53 man roster and one of them will not. So I think those that's an interesting battle. They're not the same position, but obviously two, two offensive linemen there. Defensive end has been something I have been watching all preseason because they've got six viable NFL defensive ends. I'm not saying they're top heavy, but they've got six guys. I have a hard time believing that they're going to keep more than five guys on this roster. And that, that means someone's getting cut. I know a lot of fans are sitting there saying Rasheen Green can be should be cut. But this is a guy who started both preseason games. He's guaranteed almost a million dollars. This is a guy Ryan Poles brought in. Is he willing to just cut ties with him because he's just been okay in the preseason? Travis Gibson, he had that huge first game, but that's a Ryan Poles, or I'm sorry, a Ryan Pace guy. Is that, you know, Terrell Lewis is really flashed coming in and they need pass rushers. So I'm curious how this is going to, how this is going to unfold. Dominique Robinson is another guy, but that's a Ryan Poles project. That's a raw talent. And I don't know if he's going to want to, you know, cut ties with him either someone's not making the the defensive end you know on, on the 53 and i don't know who it's going to be and one other thing that you i think fans are just of course going to be looking at is the quarterback play beyond justin fields because between between Bajan and pj walker here we just don't know what's going to happen could they keep three quarterbacks on the 53 man roster i think that's the safe bet at this point because you know this this is the thing that's changed this year with quarterbacks Tyson Bajan is a guy who you always would have been able to get to your practice squad because most teams only kept two quarterbacks on the roster. And, and there's no way you're going to pick up Tyson Bajan, an undrafted free agent from a Division II quarterback who doesn't know your system, and grab him off a practice squad to make him your backup quarterback. But you tell me now that teams are going to keep three quarterbacks to get that ec- ec- the extra active roster spot on, on a Sunday afternoon? Well, now suddenly you could see someone try and try and steal Bajan and make him their developmental QB three, where they don't need to worry about playing him right away. So I think bajan has got to stay on the fifty three, and if he does, what do you do with PJ Walker? Do you keep him as a backup because he has just been dreadful in the preseason? The reports out of training camp weren't much better. So what do you do here? Because you've guaranteed PJ Walker two million dollars. I have a hard time believing that a guy with NFL snaps is just going to be cut. You know, Nathan Peterman, that's a practice squad guy. You can't put Nathan Peterman out there on Sundays if Justin Fields gets banged up. Really curious to see what happens with the quarterback play here on Saturday against Buffalo. Bajan's your backup quarterback, Bill. Don't fight it.
<laughs> I would love to. Bage is going to be the backup quarterback in 2024. I'm confident about that. But, you know, I, I kind of sit there. I keep playing with those scenarios. You know, Bears are up 2017 midway through the third quarter. Justin Fields gets banged up. Nothing bad, but he's got he's going to miss the last quarter and a half. Do you trust a Division II quarterback who's never taken an NFL snap to protect your three-point lead? I just don't know if Luke Getzey's going to. Trust. Do it. It's a no-brainer. <laughs> Bill, great stuff. Appreciate you making the time. Thanks so much. I enjoyed it.